is a cappuccino we just made without an espresso machine and it tastes great. In this video I want to show you how to make cappuccino, latte, flat white or any milky coffee drink at home just with mocha pot and small french press or handheld frother. It's surprising how good results you can get with just a few tricks. If you stick to the end I will show you how to make a nice looking latte art without knowing how to pour latte art. So let's get started. There are three steps in making cappuccino at home without an espresso machine. First, making short, strong coffee. Then heating and then frothing the milk to get a nice texture. And number three, pouring milk into the coffee to mix it all together into a tasty cup. If you have an espresso machine available, these steps can be much quicker. But don't worry, it doesn't need to be too complicated even without a machine. And what's even more important is that it can taste even better. So it's time to start making coffee. The goal here is to have a strong coffee as a base. We picked a mocha pot for this video as many of you have it at home and we didn't use it in the video yet. There are many alternatives though and we made a dedicated video on home cappuccino with the air press and french press. So check these as well if this is your favorite coffee brewer. This is a 3 cup size mocha pot which is probably the most common one. Given the size of the basket, we'll aim to have around 70 to 80 grams of coffee, so it's perfect for two cappuccinos. Here is our process. Fill in the preheated water to the bottom chamber just under the pressure valve. Fill in the coffee basket with freshly ground espresso rose beans. We use 17 grams of coffee, 13 clicks on Comandante C40 grinder, so it's rather fine setting. Then screw the upper chamber tightly. The bottom part is a little bit hot now. You might use a towel to help you out. We don't have a proper stove in the studio, so we use the Jezebel gas stand from our friend Turgai. Patiently wait, and when the coffee starts flowing into a chamber, you can put the first part of the extraction to the separate vessel. We want to have the first 70 to 80 grams. Now you have your coffee base ready. If you make mocha pot regularly, you have it dialed in even without scales. A small adjustment to make a good base for mixing with milk is grinding coffee slightly finer or adding a little more coffee to the basket if you use pre-ground coffee. Then you can stop the extraction a little earlier. The resulting coffee might be a little unbalanced if you drink it on its own, but it will mix well with milk. We learned many mocha pot tricks from our Italian friend Matteo and there are many more you can find on his YouTube channel. Next step, which you can start when coffee is ready or in a parallel, is heating and frothing the milk. Now, there are a few important things to start with. For this cup, that is about 200 milliliters of size, I will roughly need about 150 milliliters of milk, so that's what I will pour into the French press. You should pick a full-fat milk or barista version of plant-based drink to froth and mix with coffee well. The cold temperature is 60 to 70 degrees Celsius for milk, so you should have a simple kitchen thermometer at hand to measure it. The last thing is to get a milk pitcher. It can be simple and cheap, there are options under 10 euros to start with. It's not necessary to froth the milk, but it's essential to have a control over pouring milk into a cup. The easiest way to heat the milk at home is microwave. For us, it takes 45 to 60 seconds to reach the right temperature, but you need to calibrate with thermometer. It depends on the temperature and volume of the milk and the power of the machine. We'll show you two techniques to froth milk at home manually. One with a French press and another with a handheld frother. Both techniques are simple, but it takes some time to get them right, so don't get frustrated if it's not perfect after the first try. The French press technique. To froth milk with French press, you can pour milk straight into the vessel. Just remove the plastic or metallic outer layer and heat it up. Then you put a plunger on and press a few times from the top to the bottom. This will bring air into the milk. You will very quickly see milk rising, creating the froth. Based on your preferred foaminess, you can stop. Perhaps aiming at doubling the volume is a good lead. It can be really only 3 to 5 presses to have enough. Then, you submerge the plunger into a milk and keep pressing with the milk mass. That will not create additional froth, but rather mix froth with the milk to result in this nice, smooth, silky texture that we all love in the milky coffees. Again, 5 to 10 presses might be enough, but experiment. Once finished, it's great to swirl the milk and tap on the hard surface, ideally in the milk pitcher. 
that will get rid of the bubbles and even better incorporate all foam with milk. Don't be afraid to repeat a few times and then pour it into the coffee. So now let's try if we can do the same with the handheld frother. The handheld frother technique. If you use a handheld frother, I suggest you to really start with the milk in the pitcher. It's much easier to get the best result. In the first step, you put the tip of the frother into the milk. Turn it on and bring it below the surface of the milk. You can hear the scratching sound and visually you aim to create a vortex. It's a much slower process, so don't be afraid to wait here for 15 to 20 seconds or even more. You see milk rising in the pitcher and that's your indicator. Then submerge the frother to keep mixing the froth with the milk for a few more seconds. And the important thing is now really swirling. Here again, before you pour into the coffee, it's important to swirl and tap several times to get rid of the bubbles and to have a consistent milk texture. We did a video about different types of home milk frothers in the past. Look it up if you are interested in comparing more options. Also, we tested a better version of handheld frother called Nanofoamer. It has a different technical design and in our experience creates superior results. Now that you have coffee and milk ready, it's time to pour. The latter art is a beautiful bonus, but not a requirement to have a tasty cappuccino. It takes some practice and honestly, I suck at latte art. But if you want to learn the basics, we have a popular video on our channel about latte art for beginners and you should watch it. In essence, there are two steps in pouring latte art. First, you pour from a distance into a cup, creating a nice brown canvas, mixing more milk with coffee. You can help yourself and use a spoon to mix it out nicely. Second, you get closer, picture touching the cup and you pour more foam, creating a latte art design of your choice. We invited some barista friends to demonstrate that you can really make beautiful looking latte art with these techniques. As I promised, here is my latte art sheet. Kudos to Golden Brown Coffee for sharing it on YouTube. It's called Chasing Hearts and I love it. You pour milk into a coffee from a distance, aiming to keep the nice brown layer on the top. Then you stop and use a spoon to drop leftover milk foam in a pattern you like. Grab something pointy, I use the thermometer and drag it through the dots to turn them into nice little hearts. So if you don't know how to make latte art, this is the trick for you. Okay, so these were our tips how to make cappuccino at home. I hope we motivated you to give it a try. Let us know how it works and see you in the next video. Bye bye, cheers.